Okay, so last time I did a drawing session, I kind of went over the, a little bit of the basics of the tools that I use. Um, I figured I should go a little more in depth, um, just because, uh, in particular, the pencil that I use has helped me you know, immensely in my drawing process. As you can see, I don't know if, you, if the camera is picking it up, it's a Pentel Orens. Um, it's Japanese, you can see from the Japanese writing on it. Um, I had to order it on Amazon, but it's a 0.2 millimeter lens, or lens, <laughs> uh, LED, which is super fine. I'm not sure if that shows up on the camera there. But uh, you have to be kind of careful with it because I one time I happened to poke myself in the finger with it and it broke the skin like a needle. It was that thin. Um, but a lead that thin allows for a lot of very intricate detail. Um, another thing that I started using is this little glove thing. Um, I recently got a drawing tablet. It was the uh, Huon uh, New 1060 Plus, and it came with this little thing to um, for, for when you're drawing on the tablet, and it works pretty well for not smudging pencil lines as well. So I kind of use it for both digital and for traditional inking now or drawing now. Um, that's I mean, this pencil is pretty much what I use exclusively during my drawing sessions. I have another pencil that I use specifically for uh, erasing. Which is it's another Pentel pen. I, I mean, I, I'm not really married to the Pentel brand or anything. It's just a super cheap Pentel pencil. But what I like about it is it has an extendable eraser. And the, the lead on this one's a 0.7. So I mean, if I needed to do something where I was maybe doing a lot of shading, I might switch to this pencil. But otherwise, I, I just exclusively use it for um, for erasing. Another 0.7 Pentel. And I have a few other lenses as well. I have a few other colors. I have a red, a blue. In the green. And the lead I had a special order off Amazon as well. You can see it is also covered in Japanese um, symbols. I'm not sure if it's called kanji. I, I could be totally wrong on that, but, um, but it works. I mean, yeah, the pencil's working really, really well. Um, maybe to give you an idea of the difference, this here is the 0.7 lead pencil. And as you can see, it makes kind of a bold line. But the 0.2 lead pencil we got caught in my half glove thing. It's a much finer line. I know it's, there's not a ton of difference that you can see on the camera, but or if, if I needed to do some really, really intricate, fine detail work, I would go for that pen or that pencil over the 0.7 any day. Because it's just a matter of preference, but um, like I said, I've, I've been pretty much exclusively using that, the lens pencil for my. my everyday drawing. And the other one for erasing. As you can see, it erases pretty well. Um, also, I, I always use the, the white erasers. Um, they tend to take off a whole lot more the pencil lines than those, like, if you remember in school, they had those jumbo pink erasers. Those basically just smudged up the paper. This, the white erasers are not perfect, but if you spend some time, you can get rid of most of the, uh, the marks. Provided you didn't, you know, make a really dark mark on the paper. Which I did, but from what I can see, it doesn't look like it's showing up on the paper on the video, so that is good. Um, for inking, I use a variety of different inking tools. Let me pull this up here. I have a little silly pencil case that I keep my ink pens in. These are number, I have a number of these pigmented uh, micron pens, the red, brown, green, black, blue. Um, these are all the very fine tip. Uh, if I can get this in a little bit. That is the 005 point um, micron uh, pens. So you can get really fine detail work with uh, inks with it. I have the, the multiple colors if I wanted to, if I want to break out my uh, Copic markers. Um, that's kind of why I have those different colors. Sometimes the, the line work looks a little better with colored lines. I um, also have a couple of these Faber Castell uh, pens. It's the Pit series. Um, I have a small and an extra small. Which I don't remember what they what those translate to in terms of actual size of millimeters, but the they're comparable to the uh, close to the, the extra small at least is close to the micron. Um, I also have a couple of um, Copic uh, multi liner pens. Um, if you couldn't see the Faber Castell, that was. 
I realized I was talking with Fever Castell, and now you're looking at the screen, so I'm not sure if I showed up. So if I showed it to you twice, deal with it. Um, like I said, I use the, the Copic Multilaners. I've got the 0.03, uh, 0.05, and then if I need to add some white over, over like a black area that I've already inked, I've got a couple different options. I've got a Jelly Roll white pen, and then a Uniball Signo broad that um, lays down a lot of white ink. I also have this Sharpie paint pen thing that you have to shake as if it's a uh, spray, well, spray paint. It, it, it's pretty terrible. It doesn't work very well at all. Um, now, if I need to do a moderate uh, amount of inking like for a you know, uh, fairly large size, I'll switch over to a Pilot Precise V5. You can get these at any, you know, any you know, Meyer, Walmart, any drugstore has them. And if I need to do a large area, trusty Sharpie. Can't go wrong with Sharpie. So that's inking. Oh, I didn't show you my uh, fancy pencil case that I created. I uh, created the design and I used a wood burner to burn it in. I'm sure I did a little bit of texture on the dragon there. And Dracarys, that's from Game of Thrones, if you're not aware. That's where I keep my pencils. So, uh, let's draw something. Been about 10 minutes of uh, tools, and you're probably bored with that. Um, the paper that I'm drawing on, I, if I'm doing a um, just a one-off piece for myself or something, I, I always go with bristle board or um, or, uh, or cardstock. Um, bristle board is, is I usually use for larger pieces, and this size here is just cardstock. Um, they're, they're very similar. They might be the exact same thing. I'm not entirely sure. I've never actually looked into it. I just know that they feel. Very, very similar. Um, it's about the size of a regular sheet of printer paper, but it's much thicker. It's closer to like a an index card um, layer or thickness layer. Um, and, and I don't know. I just like, I kind of tend to prefer how it feels when I'm putting the pencil lines down. Um, and for the the larger pads of bristle board, you can find those at, at Michaels. Um, I'm sure any any art supply store you can find them. Um, but cardstock, I mean, I bought this at Meyer. Um, you can get it at Walmart. You can get it, you know, just about any store carries a cardstock. Uh, Office Depot, Office Max, all of those stores carry cardstock. Like I said, let's go ahead and draw something here. Um, as I mentioned in my previous video, I always like to start with the construction lines. And just, I mean, they're, they're basically like, like drawing a basic skeleton of a, of a character. So if you start with the head, which I, I normally start with the head, um, it's just my own personal style. If I start with the head, I usually draw in a circle with a line down the middle of it, kind of extending further than the bottom of the circle. Um, the circle kind of represents the main like, bulk of the head, and the center line is obviously that center line. Um, so I kind of, start, kind of start to draw on the sides of the face here, kind of focusing on the jaw line. Because there's a number of ways you can draw characters. If you want a big, you know, muscular guy, you're probably going to want, you know, very angular, strong jawline. Um, if you want a younger character or a feminine character, um, you may opt for a softer, rounder jawline. Um, neither of them is wrong, it just depends on what type of character you create. Um, for this particular character, I'm going to go with a. Uh, I'm going to go kind of in between the two. Like the sides of the jaw, I'm going to go ahead and make them pretty angular. And then kind of round the actual bottom of the chin. Um, like I said, there's lots of variation you can put in, and it all kind of evokes a different feeling when you're looking at the, the character. Even if it's not a conscious decision, or conscious, um, if, you, if you don't consciously notice it. the top of the head actually extended a little higher than before the initial circle I drew. That's fine. It's just a the circle is just a guideline anyway. And this character is going to be very stylized. I do a skinny little neck here. It's not really anatomically correct, but for stylization. And as you can see, I, I kind of go back and forth from 
doing construction line things like the circle of the line and it's actually being putting in some more detail and then that can go back to the construction line when it gets the shoulders so I can kind of get a feel for where the shoulders are going to be and in the initial sketching phase try not to be married to any line that you put down um, that's kind of what the sketching phase is for you know if you draw something that looks great at first and then later on down the line you realize that it's just not working all together well it's if you're not committed to that first line, um, it's a lot easier to scrap it and start over again and end up with a much uh, better product. As you can see in my sketchy phase, as well in my sketch phase, my lines are pretty scratchy, they don't, there's not a lot of definitive motions, um, or definitive line strokes. Um, it's kind of on purpose, I, like I said, it's just the design phase, but once I actually commit it down, I'll usually erase most of the scratch work and actually do a finish line on it. Uh, sometimes I'll go straight from scratch work to inking, but not very often. Um, I've been doing that more lately, but uh, if I'm totally honest, I don't you know, do that every single time. Probably should, it saves time, but if it were quick and easy, everybody would do it. Yeah, like I said, I, I draw kind of a stylized um, version of anatomy, not all that realistic when I mean, it all really comes down to it, but really the, um, the key thing is when you're practicing, don't jump right to a cartoony style. Draw realistically first. Um, you want to have a good foundation set before you actually start bending the rules. Um, you, you have to know the rules before you can bend them. Um, I mean, I'm not great at, you know, regular traditional anatomy myself, but I know enough to get by. But, um, like any art teacher probably told you over the years, um, life drawing, like just actually drawing you know, real people, is the best practice you can do. And when I'm doing the initial sketching phase, when I'm like drawing the hands in, I tend to kind of just block them off, to have kind of a general idea of where, where all the fingers go. Um, I don't draw them in individually initially, because if I spend all that time drawing them in and then realize the pose is not the pose isn't working, then I just wasted a whole bunch of time. But the, <clears throat> if I just kind of give a vague hint of where they're supposed to be, I can, I can much more easily erase that and start over again. Always, sometimes I'll, you know, depending on the pose of the hand, I might put in a little bit of extra detail. But still, for the most part, I just kind of lock the fingers in. So as you can see there, it just kind of gives a vague uh, indication of the fist, which is much more detailed than that hand, but still. You know, to the arms and legs, as I start out with just what look like essentially just stick figure kind of legs. Um, again, it's just to get the pose down. Obviously, the, the next step that I take is to actually flesh out what the proportions of the legs actually are. I'll say with the arm, I'll do that. I've never been real great at drawing knees. I, I get by. Um, in my initial stage is kind of do a little cross to get an idea of where the front of it is. But <clears throat> a lot of times, if I'm trying to do a um, more serious piece, I'll end up, before I do the finished piece, I'll go and actually look at you know, pictures of knees in like a, um, 
in the reference to get it more correct. Um, I mean, the clothing does some weird folds there. It's just weird. It's one of the things I really need to work on. One of the main reasons why I use this other pencil for my erasing is because on the lens, as you can see, the eraser is kind of tiny. And it, uh, it eats away pretty quick. Um, for really small, fine detail, it's fine. And I will use it. I actually have a pack of replacement erasers ready to go as soon as this is all um, used up. As you can see, replacement erasers. But um, I think I can serve as much as I can. Once, once the once the replacement pieces are gone, I have, to, I have to buy more. So, if I don't need to, then I can sell. And sometimes I'll we'll directly contradict something that I. Uh, Said, maybe ignore me, ignore me, I don't know, for the fronts. Um, mainly, I just end up doing quite a bit of racing, racing with my around pencil here. <laughs> Sorry if I'm kind of rambling, I'm you know, still kind of getting used to recording audio. And I know a lot of dead air doesn't sound great, so I'm trying to fill it with my wonderful musings. I'm drawing and whatnot, trying to kind of impart what I've learned over the years. Sorry, I'm boring. <laughs> what I'm drawing in here is I'm trying to draw like a um, very basic uh, guard on a sword. realistic sword in the world, but serviceable, you can tell that it is a sword. I may change that later, but the design of it at least. general proportions and you know, idea of what the character is going to look like. Next up is starting on some actual facial features.
just kind of trying to make a generically angry looking person. Like I said before, the Renz Eraser is really good for erasing very small details. Just like the other end of it is good for putting down um, small details. The small eraser helps with getting rid of them. Even for the nose, it's you know, pretty stylized. They just kind of do you know, kind of a weird angle shape for this particular one since he's kind of looking down. Um, there's a hundred different anatomy tutorials I could do um, a much better job of explaining it than I could. Um, you can find them on YouTube, um, all over the place. Um, so I'm not really going to go all that into detail on like you know, anatomy of particular you know, facial structures or things like that. Um, I'm not an expert in anatomy, and you can, like I said, you can find experts online. Um, that's what I do when I get stumped. The biggest piece of advice I can, I can give to anybody um, that's wanting to start to learn how to draw or you know, draw you know, characters, character design, stuff like that, is if you get stuck, there are, like I said, YouTube is your friend. There's instructions on how to do just about anything on YouTube. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's, like I said, when I get stuck, that's what I do. I never draw the line, it's just that the mouth is just a straight line. I kind of do this kind of broken line shape with a dip in the middle of it. Kind of um, use a hint at lips. Um, slightly more realistic. Sorry, there was noise in the background. I try my best not to have distraction noises. Um, I have a cat somewhere around here that has a minute of a run that likes to play with plastic bags, which you might have heard a second ago. Which you, you try to things sometimes. Creaking noises in the chairs. Fairly old and creaks all over the place. As you can hear. Yeah, eventually, I'd like to get a new chair, but you know, that's for another time.
this feather that I'm really wearing here is fairly stylized, just like just you know, everything I do. Um, I do stylized, but. Realism, while very important, especially when you know, just learning, not the most fun thing in the universe. I guess I kind of looks like a pirate hat. <laughs> At least the bicorn, not the, not the tricorn hat. Kind of a almost a Napoleon kind of style. Black a better term. Might end up speeding up some of this video because um, you know, it's going to be a lot of just kind of drawing with not much interesting. Interesting to say. Anybody that's versed in like, clothing construction that may be watching is probably screaming at me for how terribly I'm drawing like an overcoat, but like I said, I'm just kind of not to keep overusing the word stylized, but that's the only way I can describe it. Yeah, this drawing, if I end up going any further than <clears throat> the initial pencil stage, I'm probably, I'll, I'll probably, probably go by tanking. This isn't one that I would do a lot of in-depth um, cleanup with pencils. I'm just going to go right into inking. Soon I'm going to start doing pretty regular um, live streams on Twitch, which you'll be able to follow me on twitch.tv slash Wrath of Magnus. That's W-R-A-T-H-O-F-M-A-G-N-U-S. Um, and during the live streams, you'll be able to ask questions um, to the uh, chat function or chat feature. Um, and I'll answer anything you know, within reason. I mean, anything you can think of, I'll do my best to answer. If there's anything while you're watching these videos you want me to cover, that'll be the perfect place. Sorry, my mouth be a weird noise there. It'd be the perfect place to ask because I'll be able to answer it, answer it in real time and if you want a demonstration of something I'll be able to do it right away. Pirates had a lot of buttons on their coats. It didn't seem to a certain practical purpose. I went to the Renaissance Festival about a year ago maybe 
It would have been two years ago now, when I think about it. Five has a pirate. And first of all, pirate coats, very warm in uh, mid August. In 90 degree heat. But other than that, it's a lot of fun. Not to do an annoying pirate accent all day, which I'm sure my companions that I was with just loved. That's gonna just about do it for this video. Um, if you wanna, you know, have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. Um, anything you'd like me to go over, um, feel free to you know, suggest. And like I said, I'm, I'm open to just about any question you can think of. I know I was just about done with this drawing, but get a little bit more time. This is not really a serious drawing, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time doing the super detail inking, but I'm just kind of throwing on some basics. Sorry if I keep bumping the camera. <laughs> Which, for the camera, I'm just using my regular, not uh, fancy at all, cell phone. I downloaded an app that <clears throat> allows me to connect it to the computer as a webcam. It's an Android phone, so the name of the app is Droid Cam. I don't know if there's an iPhone equivalent, but there's my shout out. Shout out to uh, Droid Cam for making this possible with that uh, free software that they provide in the App Store. There's a pro version as well that has a lot more features that I may end up getting at some point, but for purposes of this video, <clears throat> I just wanted a basic camera. And the free version delivers that. I've mentioned before in my previous video that when I get to the inking stage, I try to be more confident with my line strokes. Because there's no eraser on an ink pen. Stick around for super obvious comments like that. I've got a hundred of them. If you're still around, thanks for uh, sticking around for the, uh, this whole video here. It's been about an hour so far. An hour of monotony, I'm, I'm sure. Well, maybe you learned something. Or something. Even if all you learned was how to draw a poorly designed pirate character.
Sorry, the hand kind of gets in the way sometimes. <clears throat> I don't notice it because, you know, looking at the paper, not the screen. I guess I use this um, Pilot Precise V5 pen a lot more than I thought I did. Obviously, I'm not going to use it for like the face detail because it's just not a thin enough line to be able to do that justice. precise as I can.
if using a larger pen. Almost done. Sorry about the length of this video. It happens sometimes when I start the erasing process, I realize I totally forgot a second. Luckily, it's not a super detailed section. It's pretty easy to recreate. I'm going to a little bit and go back to erasing the lines. It's done, but I actually kind of like the erasing the stage. It's like you're you know, polishing a gemstone or something. I'm not saying that my artwork is a rare jewel. It's obviously not. But <clears throat> it's basically you're getting rid of a layer of um, a layer of uh, you know, pencil lead and revealing even underneath. And these the eraser shavings. The bane of every artist's existence. You can just kind of fold it together into a little ball, and it's, you know, easier to get rid of. Easier to get rid of. Shabby kind of pink. He's at least recognizably a pirate. And that's gonna do it for this video. Went a lot longer than I expected it to, but hopefully you learned something. Uh, hopefully you're interested to uh, join the Twitch chat or the uh, Twitch um, live stream that I'll be doing fairly soon. Um, I'm not sure exactly what day, but uh, if you follow me on Twitter or if you're following me on Facebook, just you know. Keep an eye on it there. Um, that's where I'll notify you before I'm going to do it. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, you have a great day.